Hey guys, it's Sherry Ann Richardson from Experimental Homestead or Exotic Gardening, SherryAnnRichardson.com and by annual blog .com. And tonight I wanted to show you how to make beef stew with vegetables and can it. So I'm going to do this video in sections because I don't have any way to actually put a camera above my stove. So what I have here is my cast iron skillet with a tablespoon of vegetable oil inside of it. I'm heating that up. Over here, I have five pounds of stew meat. I have 12 cups of carrot or potatoes, sorry, 12 cups of potatoes in my large uh, stock pan. And you can probably tell how large this pan is. Um, it's really huge. And I have covered those with water so they don't brown. And then back here, I have four cups of chopped carrots that have been peeled. Um, I don't bother peeling my potatoes because I don't mind the peel on them. If you don't like the peel, you can peel them. Um, that is completely up to you. But what I'm gonna do when my oil gets hot enough here, I'm going to brown the beef. Then I'm going to add it to the potatoes and the carrots. And then as soon as that's done, I'm gonna cover everything with some water and we will come back and show you that once everything is in that stock pot. Okay, so I have added everything to the pot here. Uh, let me grab the spatula so I can show you. I have the beef and the carrots and the potatoes and the water. And I have also added some spices to this. And here is what I have added. I added four and a half teaspoons of salt. And this is just your regular table salt. Uh, I actually use sea salt, but you get the idea. Um, I added a teaspoon of thyme. This was dried. I added a teaspoon of garlic powder. I added a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And now I have covered everything with some water, and I'm going to bring this to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so a very important step is to bring some water to a boil in a pan and sterilize all of your canning jars. Make sure all sections of the jar gets good and sterilized. And you're going to do the same thing with the lids and bands. Okay, so once the jar is sterilized, you want to set it here. I use a funnel and then you are going to Fill the jar with the food, trying to drain off as much liquid as possible. You want just the food at this point. That's going to give you the most food in your jar. You're going to fill it up with the liquid when you're done, and you're going to fill it to about an inch from the top, more or less. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do video by myself here. So, um, I'm trying to hold the camera. Oops! <laughs> okay. I'm trying to hold the camera and fill the jar. And that's really difficult because it's really hot. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop. I'm going to shake that down. And I'm going to add just a little bit more and then I'm going to fill it with broth. But as you can see, you want to fill it up just about to right here. Okay, so the last step is to dip my bands and my lids, and this is not dipping the bands real well, so I'm going to, I'm going to tilt it like that because I want to make sure all of these get sterilized. All right, and then I'm going to place the cut lids and bands on the jars, but first I'm going to wipe them down. So give me just a moment. Um, you actually do that with white vinegar. And so let me get a little paper towel here and get some white vinegar on it. And what I'm going to do is wipe the top of the jars down with the white vinegar. Just going to do a few at a time. And then I'm going to very quickly put my lids on so I know these are done. And continue the process. Um, I don't want to take that off because that burner is so hot. 
and my drawers are sliding and I don't want them to slide okay so I've wiped my lids or my drawers down and now I want to get these hot sterilized lids on and the last thing I'm going to do is put the bands on I want to make sure that lid is centered and I'm just going to put these fingertip tight. Oops. Okay, that went in there, so I'm going to just fish it out. It'll be okay. Um, it's not going to be hurt or anything. It just got a second sterilization. Um, and I know the new lids say you don't have to sterilize them, but I do it anyway. Um, I don't think it hurts anything. And I think it's just a safety precaution that those of us that have been canning for a long time know to do and still do. So, okay, now I'm going to get my canner up here and I'll show you the process. Okay, so the jars are in the pressure canner. And one thing that I forgot to show you on video was using a bubble popper to go down along the sides of the jar and release any air bubbles that might be in the jars and then add a little bit of extra liquid. So what we're gonna do, Jeff is gonna put the lid on the canner and he's gonna lock it into place. And then we are going to bring it to a boil over medium high heat. We are going to vent the steam for 10 minutes and then we're gonna close the vent. And the way we do that, um, I have a gauge here that goes on mine and we're going to adjust that to 10 pounds of pressure because it's actually setting at 15 pounds right now. Um, and then that is going to go on the uh, thing poking up in the center of the lid. And we are going to process these jars for 75 minutes. I mean, I'm sorry, for 90 minutes. It's 75 minutes for pints. It is 90 minutes for quarts, and I did quarts. And then when the timer is up, we're going to turn off the heat and let the pressure return to zero naturally. We're going to wait an additional two minutes. We are going to remove this. Um, and then we are going to remove the canner lid, and we're going to wait for 10 minutes. We're going to remove the jars. We're going to let them set at room temperature for 24 hours, and then I'm going to check the seal. If the jars are sealed, I'm going to label and store them in a cool, dark, dry place. And if the jars are not sealed, then I'm going to either remove the bands and lids, wash the top of the jar, re-sterilize a brand new banded lid. Do not reuse your lids. Start with a new one. Bands are okay to reuse, but not the lids. And then I will reprocess, or I can just put the food in the refrigerator, and I can use it up within a couple days. Um, whatever we decide that we're going to do. So um, anyway, I'm going to get off here, and I'm going to let him get started with the processing, and we're going to eat some of that beef stew that's left over there in the pot. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.